So I got a super lame comment on a YouTube short that I posted. Essentially, I was recapping what happened during a Childish Gambino concert. I was talking about how cool the lights were, some of the choreography, and all of the extra stuff. And I was like, wow, this is a really cool show. And then this guy, this, this absolute turbo virgin, popped on, and he was like, it should be about the music. Like, come on. Okay, buddy, let's make it all about the music. Uh, Donald Glover came out, and the instrumentation was really great, and his vocals were super on point, and all the songs sounded good. That sucks. That's boring. I think that stupid six-word comment really struck a chord with me because it makes me think about all of my least favorite things when it comes to musicians and music culture in general, and just this general sense of superiority, you know, like a puritanicalism. Yeah, let's all disregard this giant bouncing hologram skull and just talk about how he sings. This is probably not what that chode intended when he wrote the comment, but I'm gonna bounce off of it anyway. I hate this mentality that music is a competition. I don't like that there is an idea that you can measure the technical greatness of music as if it has any semblance of objectivity whatsoever. I, I hate the sentiment that implies that when shows utilize stuff like special effects and choreography and dancers and a general sense of cinematic showmanship that it is just some excuse to cover up shortcomings somewhere else, as if those shortcomings even matter or exist. I think it's lame when folks get mad about like video accompaniment. I think it's super lame when folks get all upsetty spaghetti over backing tracks or click tracks. This weird insistence that analog is just always a million percent better than digital. Mocking shorter songs and insisting that everything good be like five minutes or something like that. Stating that all lyrics need to be these poetic analyses of the human condition, disregarding the entire hip hop genre. Uh, basically, I hate Rick Beato. I, I really don't like Rick Beato. I hate that guy so much. I will make a dedicated video about him someday. That is besides the point. I really hate this mode of thinking because it's so antiquated and it is rooted in a lot of the limitations that musicians were facing 50 years ago. That old guard that really laid the foundations for us to bounce off of in the future, that kind of set the standard and the tone for greatness in music. Back in the day, there was this really brutal barrier of entry to get into a studio, let alone have a label release something and invest the money believing they can turn a profit. So as a result, you have all of these old heads just kind of insisting that these old musicians that had to rely so heavily on technical craftsmanship to prove their worth, you have these old heads saying that that's just objectively what is best. That is how music is supposed to be. This is the standard that we should be measuring everything off of. And that emphasis on technical prowess really annoys me. Like you are missing out so hardcore on like entire worlds of new possibilities and dimensions when you demonize the democratization of music. Right now, there is more music being put out and there are more bands and more musicians. Like, does that make it less valuable? Some doofuses will tell you that it does. And some intrinsic scarcity perspective, I, I guess an overabundance of music does make it less valuable. But I don't want to treat music like a rare material. There is a limitless combination of notes and there are even more possibilities for how you can make those notes sound, what instrument you're playing, what synthesizers, what settings, what emphasis on reverb and all that other jazz. Music is something to be toyed with, something to be fiddled with, something to be experimented with. You gotta stretch it, you gotta mangle it, you gotta just beat the crap out of it. This is the best time in the world to be a music fan, period. I don't care what you read online, written by some baby boomer loser. We are being flooded by millions and millions of songs by hundreds of thousands of new artists that you otherwise would never have heard of in your entire life. A good chunk of it is absolute garbage, for sure. But I would argue that, like, objectively, there is also more good music coming out now than any other point in time as well. You just gotta look for it, you know? It's not gonna be in the top 10. Anybody who just checks the top 10 for new music kind of deserves to be miserable in my opinion. If you really are a music lover, then looking for the good stuff shouldn't be an issue, right? I feel like there is a lot that you can learn from these hyper amateur songwriters like those kids 15 years old fiddling on their dad's work MacBook just goofing around in their bedroom. These songwriters coming at the craft with absolutely zero technical knowledge, only passion in their heart and a vision in their brain. I think there's something notable about those kids who have just been completely untouched by the constraints that come inherently with mastering any craft in the world. I know it's lame to say that people lose a certain spark as they become more proficient in anything. But also I think there is a reason that people tend to get attached to most bands' earlier releases as well. It is that inherent spark. And there's more of that spark 
everywhere right now than at any point in history. I think it's really cool to follow these young new songwriters as they're just pouring their souls haphazardly and earnestly into something. It's cool to watch them develop and grow, and I think you're gonna have a really hard time finding anything more sincere than that anywhere else in music. What you're hearing from these kids lacks a lot of the technical mastery that you'd expect from like these 60s, 70s, and 80s bands, but they gotta compensate somehow, you know? Oftentimes it's with these really raw lyrics, some out there concepts, weird production choices. Look at projects uh, like Hecra, Lobster Fight, earlier Cave Town. God, I could point at hundreds of interesting bands and artists on Spotify that have less than 40 monthly listeners. I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. The original comment was how this one dude thought that music should just be the absolute forefront of a concert experience. This dude took issue with how I was pointing out the other aspects of a Childish Gambino gig or someone dared to titillate the audience's other senses than just their hearing. Like up until now, I've been talking about how magical and infinite and cool music is as an artistic medium. But it also wrestles my jimmies when folks just get so complacent and happy with just the audio being the only aspect of music that they just want to engage with. Like, is there nothing else you want to do with your project than just songs? There's nothing wrong with bands that just want to make music. That's cool. But for folks who want to take their project and explore other mediums, such such as performance or visual aesthetics or storytelling, for them to get chalked up as gimmicks, I think that's really sad and you are only hurting yourself. Are there no other messages in these artists' hearts that they want to get across to their audience that they can do in a more impactful way using other mediums? I really adore projects like uh, Gorillaz, Covey, Saint Terrible, or even Childish Gambino, you know? They are using their albums, their songs, their performances as jumping off points to tell bigger narratives, bigger stories, express bigger ideas than what just audio alone can express. With Gorillaz, you have these decades long storylines and arcs. They are globe trotting adventures. It's like a Saturday morning cartoon for grown ups. With Kovi, you have like this dense mystery with like tons of lore to uncover. And it's in the album artwork, it's in the music videos, it's even a lot of the metadata if you're willing to dig around and like. CDs and that sort of thing. Saint Terrible is pushing the boundaries of what I think DIY projects can do with these incredibly elaborate performances. They have a dedicated florist during some shows. They're getting these bigger points across with costumes and these elaborate sets and performances. Cost it's amazing. It's Saint Terrible's so good. And now you have Childish Gambino doing these full scripts and these elaborate crazy light shows. I'd be willing to bet that stuff like Atlanta are extensions of him and this one unified voice that he's trying to establish as an artist. I'm actually going to see Toy One Pilots here pretty soon. I mean, they are famous for that sort of thing. I get a certain vibe from people who look down on projects doing stuff that's not just exclusively music. Like if you're not pouring every single second available to you as you're working on a project into the audio itself that you are compensating or something like that, what a wasted opportunity. How limiting, how anti-art is that. You can be good at multiple disciplines at one time. New art has different ambitions, it feels like. That old stuff is like a cool root and foundation, but what can you grow on top of that? These old heads are getting left behind and it makes me so sad for them. Should it be about the music? Yeah, obviously, it is. But don't constrain yourself to just music. If you have like the tiniest inkling of, hey, this would be a cool idea, I think you should just freaking go for it. Don't let these old head losers like this guy or Rick Beato tell you that there are some margins of measurement for how great something can be. That there's like this template for what is good, what is bad, what is expected, what is lame. Do you want to bum yourself out? Read through the comments of any Rick Beato video, you're gonna find all of these young emerging musicians on there being like, Oh Rick, you're so right, man. Oh, I'm gonna make music just like this. That is so sad. Isn't that a bummer? Does that bum anybody else out? It makes me sad to see these young kids just lapping up all of the cynical, antiquated, frustrated ramblings of this old dude. Kinda just refuses to move forward and push music to what it can possibly be on different mediums and different standards. Hurts my soul, makes me sad. That is like 
my least favorite flavor of music fan or musician. I just want to whine about this on a public forum, because I can, because this is America. If you consider yourself a fan of the music medium in any way, shape, or form, I really want you to just dig into it, okay? There's no right or wrong way. Just go for it. Do not constrain yourself to what's popular. Do not constrain yourself to whatever these old head losers think is important that you need to keep in mind while writing a song. There are other things that determine value than just proficiency. If you just picked up an instrument and there's a song in your heart, you don't need to be good to bring it to life. That thing still has value because it has a part of you in it and you are valuable. And if you're a fan, just surrender yourself to a project once in a while. Try to meet the artist at where they are. Try to understand where they're coming from, what they're trying to express, and then take away whatever you can from everything. It doesn't hurt you to look for a lesson or something good in everything that you're consuming. You'll be a much better, well-rounded person if you're just pulling what you can from as many places as possible. It's fun to hate things and bolster your own sense of self-importance, but at the end of the day, who's having more fun at shows? Me? Or that guy. I'm having a lot more fun than that loser. Also, I'd like to apologize to this guy. I've just completely blown out of proportion what he probably intended. Be happy. Be joyful. Be safe wherever you're at, you know? Thank you. Stay spicy. I will see you next time.